All right, hello everybody. Welcome to Sassy Justice. Uh, we are going to talk about getting started with SAS. And so I hope that by the end of this lesson, each and every one of you uh, will be able to compile SAS style sheets into CSS. Uh, man, that was a lot of sibilance. That was surprisingly difficult to say. Uh, all right, let's get started. Um, so everybody who's in the Docker lesson yesterday, similar kind of thing. Um, we're just going to do it, and then we're going to talk about it. So make sure that you've got a folder ready to rock. Make sure you got your Kettle One Vodka nearby, of course. Oh, already exists. Okay, so we got an empty folder here. Um, there's a few different ways that you can install SAS. Uh, we're going to use uh, the node one. This does not require that it be a node project or a backend or anything like that. You can do this with your regular old HTML, CSS, and JavaScript kind of stuff. But you got to have some way of getting SAS onto your system, and node is probably the easiest way. So we're going to npm init dash y, like so. And then we are going to, um, there's a few different packages. We want Dart SAS. Let me see what, uh, I think it's just SAS. Yep, it is. All right, so we are going to npm install SAS like that, S-A-S-S. -S. It's an acronym, stands for Syntactically Awesome Style Sheets. Cool, done. Cool. And now we should be able to NPX SAS help. Yeah, cool. So this will give us all of the things that we can do um, with SAS. Let's take a second to look through this. So only a couple of these that we super care about. Um, and we're going to use this syntax for right now. We're going to say, run the SAS command. Give it an input file, tell it where we want to output. And then this watch option is super helpful also. But if we make a file, we're going to call it app.scss. It's like CSS with an S in front of it. So your folder should look like this. And you should be able to npx.m, npx sass app.scss, app.css, like that. And then you should end up with that CSS, that SCSS file and the CSS file. So take a second to make sure that you can do all of those things uh, before we move on. I was able to do all those things, but I do have some NPM errors at the end. Talk to me, what you got? Uh, it says NPM error code 64, NPM error path. There's the path to this folder. NPM error command failed, but everything worked. Uh, and I, I, I see all the all of these command options. Okay, I wouldn't lose so much sleep over it then. Okay. Anybody else having a hard time with this so far? Cool. So now what we're going to do, we're going to make uh, an index.html. And why don't you go ahead and open that up in a text editor, and we're just going to put some boilerplate in. You can follow along with me, or I'll, uh, um, I'll throw this in chat, too, if you want to just copy paste it. Oops. 
Nope. Oh no, I just realized that Vim doesn't have the fucking exclamation point and it just does it for you. So you can install it. It's called, um, it's called Vim Snippets. Um, I don't use it, but it doesn't mean you don't have to. That's because you always type out your own HTML. What was that? Don't you always type out your own HTML? Yeah, I pretty much always do. And let's let's put something in here that we can sassify. So I'm going to make a list of cards. Why not? God, is there a single picture of not all three of these guys at the same time? Whatever, who cares? I'll take it. Okay, so just some CSS to work with. Uh, as promised, I will paste this in chat if you want to use mine. Ultimately, it doesn't matter a ton, though. Is there a way to copy and paste it to where it is formatted like that? Ah, uh, shit. Uh, I'll put it in the um, in the chat for this Zoom link. Thank you. You're very welcome. All right, so for this next part, we're going to need at least two uh, terminal windows. So one of them is going to be our server that we can just run light server on. So we're serving up that uh, HTML and CSS. I'm going to have one for my editor. And then uh, we're going to have another terminal that's just for SAS. And what we're going to do is npx sass app.scss app.css. And then we're going to add an option. Come on, man. We're going to add an option for watch. Like that.
Neat. Questions so far? Cool. Now, should open up the SCSS file, not the CSS file. Don't touch the CSS file. Open up the SCSS file. And we can, uh, all CSS is valid in this. So you can write regular old CSS all, all the live long day if you want to. So we can say something like images are max width um, 200 pixels. Neat. Um, now, Here's like the first SAS thing that we can do with this. Um, wouldn't it be cool if I could make that a variable? Why I can. So I could make a variable called image dash width. So it just starts with a dollar sign. Then you can assign it any value. And now we can use that variable anywhere we want. I could use it a bunch of different places if I wanted to. And the actual values in exactly one place. That's pretty cool. Next cool thing I can do with this. Let's say uh, with those cards, I want to do something like uh, display none, or not display none, um, list style none. Okay, well, these images are in this cards thing. I don't necessarily want to set this to maybe all of the images, just some of them maybe, just the ones that are in the cards thing. I can put that inside of it like that. So you can nest these selectors. What that is going to turn into is that. So the thing I just wrote here ultimately turns into that. And really, that's what's happening in this other tab. Every single time I make a change to that SCSS file, uh, SAS compiles it into this CSS file. It didn't teach your browser any new tricks. Your browser still only speaks HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, period, the end. There's no other thing that your browser does. However, we can write this other language and have a program turn that into CSS for us. This is the exact same thing that TypeScript does. Your browser doesn't understand TypeScript. But you can write TypeScript and have the TypeScript compiler turn your TypeScript into JavaScript so that your browser can run that instead. Ask me some questions about that. So essentially, this is a just a fast way to put styling in a lot of spots. Mm -hmm. SAS is actually let's uh, let's dig in on that a little bit. So uh, it's an acronym for syntactically awesome style sheets. It's actually two different things. It's SAS and SCSS. They're two different syntaxes for the same language, basically. SCSS is what we call a superset of CSS. That sounds like a fancy ass academic thing. It's not, it's from math. 
but the idea is that if this is CSS, this is SCSS. <laughs> Gentlemen, this is SCSS. The, uh, uh, all CSS is valid SCSS. SCSS adds some things also. Um, SAS proper is a totally different syntax. I wouldn't worry too much about it because I think by and large, the design community decided they fucking hate it uh, as they should because it sucks. But it was supposed to be less noisy. And what that means is no curlies, uh, fewer uh, parentheses. If you like the Ruby style compared to JavaScript, SAS is a lot more like that. And I think even SAS came out of like the Ruby community largely. I'll show you what it looks like. So this is what um, regular SAS looks like. No semicolons, no curly braces. Uh, it mainly figures out what things are supposed to be based on their level of indentation. It's annoying. I think it's really hard to read, harder to type. Ultimately, turns into CSS also. So what are these cool things that it adds? Well, it adds loop, uh, sorry, sorry, it adds variables, adds nesting. Those are the two things we just did. Uh, it adds maybe my favorite thing, which is mix-ins. Mixin is like a set of rules that you can just treat like a variable. So I'll use that a lot for um, typography. This is a primary heading. It's this color, it's this size, it's this weight, it uses this font face. All of these things together, um, I'm gonna put that in a mixin and then everywhere I need to use that, I just include the mixin. It also has some things that um, are not in CSS at all, like functions. Um, you can say, it, like similar to a mix-in, except you can like pass in variables and stuff. Have it like dynamically generate code for you. Loops. Uh, it's got some cool built-in functions like uh, being able to uh, just lighten and darken um, colors. Make a variable out of the blackness of a color, the blueness of a color. Darken something, get the complement of a color. It turns SAS into, or uh, turns CSS into a little bit more of a programming language. Desaturate, grayscale something. Lighten something, mix two colors together. Opacify. So we get a whole bunch of cool built-in stuff also. And that's kind of the big idea of it. Ask me some questions. Do we have to, if we want to use it for our file, do we, or a folder, do we have to do this exact thing in the terminal every time or just the, the watch part? Um, so, what you ultimately do is go into that package JSON file and make a script for it. So you could say like compile styles and then uh, SAS 
app.scss, app.css. So we may make one of those and then one for watch that takes in that option. So I'll usually like keep these in scripts like this. And then, yeah, anytime you're building your app, you might do something like, all right, well, I'm also going to make one for serve that runs, um, that does like a compile styles and something like that. Or you can just do the thing that we just did. Both ways are fine. Okay. Uh, SAS is not an alternative to Bootstrap. In fact, Bootstrap is made out of SAS. Um, one of the ways that SAS works is using a whole bunch of SAS functions under the hood. More questions? Why would someone choose to, would it, is it just personal preference for choosing whether or not you would want to use SAS or Bootstrap? Uh, no, so no, let's see. There's a really good diagram uh, problem with Bootstrap comic. Let's see if I can find the thing I'm looking for. My, my main gripe about Bootstrap is that um, bootstrap site. every fucking Bootstrap site looks like this. <laughs> like all Bootstrap sites look exactly the fucking same. Um, all those, all these are Bootstrap sites. Bootstrap is a Bootstrap site. Um, now, like if you're uncomfortable with design work, like this is a really great, like bootstrap and, or like my preference would be uh, foundation, which is a competitor to that. Like, I think that both of the tools uh, are really good for um, helping you do stuff that doesn't look like shit. And so if you're not confident in your ability to do that yourself, you're gonna save a lot of time and energy learning Bootstrap. Now, the gripe that I have with them is that they all fucking look the same and it mangles your HTML. Every single one of these like popular styling tools, including foundation, work off of, um, they make assumptions about your HTML. Um, class names that you use, like which, what your tag names were, all, like all those kinds of things. And uh, I find that really irritating. And I think that like, it, it forces you to write your HTML in a really unnatural way. Uh, and so it's one of the reasons that I, I sort of shy away from those tools. I'm not opposed to styling frameworks at all, um, but that the whole styling world seems to have sort of centralized on that, I find kind of distasteful. Uh, there's one that's really popular right now, and I always feel bad about this one because uh, it also has some like similar assumptions that I, I find kind of distasteful, but it was written by, I think, some of the coolest fucking designers working in CSS now called Tailwind. Um, Tailwind stuff does not all look the same. Um, so that's a Tailwind thing. That's a tailwind thing. That's a tailwind thing. Um, it's uh, it, it's it's very similar in philosophy, I think, to Bootstrap and CSS, but a lot more modern. And how it works is um, these things called utility classes. Bootstrap works the same way. Uh, it just gives you a whole like library of these things that you can put on your elements 
and then it'll make those look like tailwind. Um, like a, a, as you all know, I'm like pretty hardcore about um, keeping visual concerns out of HTML. This stuff counts for me. Um, but I would way rather use Tailwind or Bootstrap or whatever than like have a site that looks like shit. And there's a lot you can learn about design from using these tools because the defaults and stuff that they have in here are not bad. Um, and like they can help you get used to what these things are supposed to look like. But yeah, I love this dude. Um, and I disagree with him about that. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's so good because that's exactly what I did the first time I saw this. <laughs> Uh, and like, for what it's worth, everybody that I know who uses Tailwind fucking loves it. I've, but like, on the other hand, even if you use those tools, nobody regrets getting good with uh, CSS and SAS. Ask me more questions about SAS. All right, I'm gonna put this link in chat. And what I want you to do, let's take, let's take like 10 minutes. Pick some of these things uh, and play around with them a little bit on that HTML page. Try making some, uh, try making a mix in. <laughs> try using variables. Um, see if you can figure out inheritance or these math operators. It's a pretty fine place to get started. Try nesting some selectors. 10 minutes, give it a shot, and then we'll chat a little bit more. Go!
All right. Hello, smaller group of people. Um, so uh, problems you ran into, questions you had, opportunities that you see, hit me. I was trying to figure out how to transition um, when I transformed at the image. Uh -huh. you trying to use a mix in as well, but I wasn't sure what to change uh, the MS transform to, but I knew that there was a web kit for transition. All right, so let's take a look. All right, so let's say I wanted to do a like a zoom transition on this. Uh, that would probably be something like uh, transition transform 0 0.3 seconds. And then this is one of my favorite things you can do with nesting. So with it, in, in regular uh, CSS, this would work like this. You had a, like a hover um, pseudo selector for it. And then you hover, do a transform scale 1.1 1 .1 or something. And now, all right, so we've got that happening there. In SAS, what you can do is ampersand. Ampersand is a shortcut for whatever whatever thing you're already in. So you can use that for, um, oh, and images that have this class, oh, or images that have this pseudo selector like that. And now you've got that. Now, like, could we mix this in? You're goddamn right we can mix this in. So make a mix in called like a uh, zoom on hover. Eh, I'm gonna do dashes. And we can just yank all that out, put it in the mix in, and then include zoom on hover. Pew pew. We could also do that with the like the H1. You can really just go to town on this shit. <laughs> yeah, I guess that was one of my issues. I also instinctively tried to do the um, for cards with image colon hover mm -hmm. as well. This is that's so much cleaner. Other. Uh, Questions you guys had about SAS. I was looking at the modules. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So let's say uh, I'll just, I'll, I'll show you where like. Well, like a full SAS project looks like. So this is, I'll shoot, why don't I do the um, Firebase site? Uh, so like for the Firebase site, I have all the typography in one file. And then um, I have all the colors in one file. These are all the colors that are on that uh, site. And I have all the sizes that we use. So like I have all of the entire design system for that site is broken out into these modules. Um, and then you can import them in uh, so they can talk to each other. And then in the actual app itself, like this is a view app. Uh, 
you can import those in and fire away. So is, is this um, I thought it used to be app.view kind of like the app JS? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, very similar idea. Um, uh, difference is like in view, the like JSXE kind of part of it is split out from the code part of it. So, but yeah, all of this stuff is not so very different than what you do in like an app.js and a view file. And then also you carry the styles for a component along with the rest of it also. And that's all you have to do to make something uh, uh, SAS, which is pretty cool too. Let's see how this is an example of like using the typography from that. And you put all of the resets that you want to use in a file. It's pretty cool. This is awesome. I don't have any other questions for you, Katie. Uh, not really, no. All right, awesome. Hopefully this is helpful. Mm -hmm. Go write some code. Thank you.